Hey everybody. So I figured I'd shoot a little video. Um, I'm working on this little pug here that I printed out on paper. It's supposed to be a black pug. So I'm going to do the fill in black and the outline in silver. So um, I went around the outline one time. This is kind of an experiment. This is a, um, a dish towel from the dollar store. And I'm using uh, my uh, Mauser International um, chain stitch machine and using the Mauser uh, silk rayon floss. Sorry for moving you around. So I went around my design uh, one time and here at the face, um, it's actually supposed to look like this, but I'm cheating because I didn't want to stop and start my thread. So I just went from eyeball to nose to eyeball and back and then I'm going to cover over this part with black so you won't see it. But it saves time um, as long as you do the right color first. So now I'm going to um, get started on filling the body of the pug. And um, I just go around uh, one or two times around the outside before I'm going to fill. It doesn't have to be accurate because you can come back later and fix it with the final outline shape. Um, I'm stopping because I'm going back to look at my uh, paper with the pug on it to see what the heck I'm supposed to be going and doing because the eyes and ears are filled in silver but the, um, the front paws are not. So. Um, just going around my outlines and I'll do this you know twice but the whole thing is getting filled in with black so it doesn't really matter when you do it I usually kind of work in sections um, anyway so I'll go back around that uh, paw is supposed to be separate from the rest of the body, but I'll come back with the outline and go over the black later. Slowing down a little bit for the turns. And if I don't get it like right, like I kind of missed the tip of the ear, you can either go back right away because you're here, or you can. Um, get it on your next pass or when you're filling. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of not that accurate as some people, but you know, getting the job done. So anyway, okay, so there's once around. Now it's a little easier the second time around because you can kind of see where you were going around. And you know, it really doesn't have to be completely accurate. Honestly, it'll look all right when you're done, hopefully. You kind of have to judge um, some stuff. So this paw is going to get filled in, so I'm just going to fill that in while I'm here. Go around here. And I didn't get that ear outline very good. Sometimes I go like right on my silver, which will be the final outline. But you'll come back and fix it later. So you can make everything really sharp in the end. So now I've gone around. See, I kind of missed there. I'll go back. Gone around the outline twice. And I'm going to start to fill. So I'm just going to go over here. And I'm going to just start to make circles. And I'm not really, you know, worried if I don't get all the blue. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know there's a blue towel under there, so it's okay. So right now I have uh, servo set at 1700 speed, and I have a 45 millimeter pulley. So I'm just going around. If you miss something, go back. I'm gonna go up here, and I'm gonna fill this area.
So I'm just going in clockwise circles, and then I slow down and, you know, dive in where I'm supposed to make a particular shape. It doesn't matter, like, if you go over. I don't know if you can see, I kind of went over the toe a little bit. Coming back with my silver outline, I will correct any shape that I need to correct. Like here, I can see that he doesn't have a fat belly. So I'm going to go back here and give him a nice rounded fat belly. Okay, and now back to my filling. And sometimes you might want to kind of go over your area just to stabilize everything. I have um, one piece of backing underneath here. I'm going to um, start filling up in this area. Kind of thin here. If you miss something, I just go back. I like my circles to be kind of random and uh, not uniform. So now I'm going to slow down and I'm going to go in this paw. But if I mess it up, it doesn't matter. Like you can go across the outline like that. Because I'm going to come back later with the silver anyway. And it's going to... Um, cover anything I do like that. So it's not, you know, it's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be stressful. So if I see any blue spots showing, I'm just going to go back go down in here. Um, if you move to another area, it's usually good to move there in circles so that it doesn't look like you see a straight line going through your, your project. Um, and a lot of the like cuteness of the item, you shape that with your final color, with your final edge. So this really doesn't have to be that accurate. back up now. So the needle is pulling up the blue thread occasionally. Just go back and nail it down. So I'm done with my fill. I'm gonna go back over here, I'm gonna circle, circle, do that area a little bit that was a little light. And I'm gonna circle back over here and just check it out. Okay, I can go up here. This area is a little light. I'm, I'm moving back to the butt using circles. And I like to kind of do like a random uh, circle fill over my fill. So it kind of lets you get anything you missed. 
and it also, if all your lines were running in one direction, this kind of like locks them down. I don't know, it's just me, that's the way I do it. So I'm just circling around, cover up that blue right there, get this part here I missed, and we're now done with the pug. Uh, black color. I'm going to come back. I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going to change the uh, thread to silver and I'll be right back. Okay, so I changed my thread to silver by, you know, cutting it near the thread cone, tying the, the silver onto the black and just pulling it through the machine. So now I'm going to start at the eye and I'm going to just make circles, go through the center, go through the center of the eye and then just make some circles around the eye. Okay, so I'm done and I'm stopping with the machine pointing away from me. Raise the needle, pull out the slack from below, then I raise my foot and I try to pull the um, piece out. If it doesn't come out, I lower my needle a little bit and see if that helps. If not, I'm careful, I'll reach in. I know that the thread on the right is the one from below it has the slack so I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to cut it off here with enough um, slack to tie or pull through to the other side that's the side this is the one that I just finished sewing this is the one that is loose from the bottom and I'm just going to move to the nose the nose is kind of supposed to be a square ish thing so I'm going to hold this so I keep my starting tension I'm going to go around my nose. I'm making the shape of kind of square-ish. And then I'm going to go through the center of the nose. And then I'm going to go around the outside to get a nice edge. Okay, and then I'm stopping pointing away from me again. I actually did not have to hold on to that, but for the first five stitches. Raise the needle. I'm pulling some slack out from below. Lift the foot. Pull the piece away. If your piece doesn't pull away, lower your needle a little bit so it comes out and makes it easier to get the thread. Pulling my thread out, I'm going to cut the end. This is the part I'm going to tie right here. So I pull that off the needle. This is the one that comes from below. I'm going to hang on to it. I'm going to move over here to the other eye. Put my foot down and start going on the eye. Hopefully you all can see that okay. Okay, I can let go of the thread. I'm gonna go around the eye, through the center, around the eye. Yep, just gonna get this thread out of the way. Okay, hopefully the eyes are the same size. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna raise my needle, pull some slack out, lift my foot pull my project away. Okay, now my project doesn't want to come away, so I'm very carefully going to just lower the needle a little bit, see if I can get some slack. I, I can't. I'm not getting slack now. I don't know for whatever reason. I'm going to just reach in. I'm going to grab the thread on the right with the hook, which I know is the one that comes from the bottom. Pull the slack up that way, and I'm going to cut my thread, and then I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to grab the other side. I'm going to pull it off my needle. And now I'm going to, um, because I want to do the outline next, I don't want these threads in the way. I'm going to just pause the video and I'm going to pull the threads back to the back. I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back for the outline. Now's a good time to kind of take a look at your paper and what your target is supposed to be. And then get started on your outline. So I got my thread up from below here. I'm going to back my machine up a little bit and make sure my needle's not sticking out. And then I'm going to start somewhere. Um, usually I just start like because my machine was going away when I stopped. So here we go. Now we're going to be doing the outline. I'm going to um, increase my tension just like one turn so I can get a maybe a crisper outline. And here we go. Probably go around the outline like three times. Um, I'm going a little slow because the phone's in the way and I can't see. Okay, now here we go. 
takes a minute to kind of get started. So there's a little tail. Technically that's two right there. And we'll go back again in here for number three. So now is when I'm trying to be sort of accurate. You can always come back around later and fix something. So this paw, this line goes across the paw. So I'm just going to circle the paw like three times right now. And then later I'll come back and stay on that line and make it straight. Okay, up to the ear. The ear gets filled in in silver. So I'm going around the outline twice. Now I'm going to fill it in. So I'm using the Mauser regular chain stitch machine and Mauser silk uh, rayon floss from Abdul Bari. Okay, I gotta stop a sec, take a peek at the ear, see what it's supposed to look like. I mean, I was looking on the paper pug that I have. I always print out an extra thing, either in color or black and white. You can't circle like little circles in the tip of things. Just dive in and come back out. Okay, I'm getting out of here. Go on around the back to the tail. Okay, so now I'm on number two. Anything that's like a sharp corner, eh, I usually round it off. The chain stitch is not easy to make really sharp turns, so I just avoid them. I'm gonna just go around this ear back out. So this is number three. I'm going to skip the tail. Just come on around. I'm going to skip in here this time too. I'm going to go around this ear. up. I'm going to skip going in there because I did it twice already. And we're pretty much done. So um, now I'm going to finish. I pull up the needle. I'm facing, uh, I don't know, three o'clock. I'm going to pull some slack out. I'm going to pull my piece away. The one uh, on the right is the one from below. I'm going to cut the thread. I'm going to pull my piece off. I'm going to pull it out. And uh, this is what I would start with next. So that's my, my little pug there. Um, I can see I missed a spot here with the black and maybe a little here. So I'll just put the black back on and go back. But there's the pug. So now this end, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna wrap it over my needle, pull it tight. I hope you can see that stick. Sorry, okay, I'll do it again. Wrap it over my needle, 
pull it tight, stick that through the eye, pull that out, and then I know I was going in that direction, so I'm going to pull my last thread tight. I'm going to stick it right back in where I came out. I'm going to go, let me get this out, wait, get my towel out from under my foot. I'm going to pull it through to the back, okay? Then I'm just going to feed it back in and through maybe a half an inch of thread and you just I'm I got my finger on the other side so I'm making sure I'm not coming out the other side I'm gonna pull that tight and then I'm gonna snip that off and then I'm gonna find where I started which got got caught under here but I'm gonna snip this off leave about a half an inch and pull that out and there is the entire pug um, I will put the black on, go back and just touch up these spots that I missed. But there you go. And I'm going to come to the back. I'm going to take this tearaway backing and I'm going to pull it off. I'll go back in on the black later, but anyway. Tear, away, tear off this tearaway backing here. And we're done. Let me get this little piece here. There, so there is the pug on the dish towel. Um, let me see here. So, so there's the pug on the dish towel. Um, and that was all done on the uh, Mauser chain stitch machine, which I love. It is exactly like a singer. And um, it's really a great, great machine. This, um, this is where I keep my needle. It has a magnet on it, and so the needle is always always there. Um, anyway, so there's the pug, real time uh, pugness. I, I am gonna go back and touch up the black, those maybe three areas real quick, but that's the pug. I don't know, not sure it looks like a pug, but whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good evening.